Hello friends, welcome to Abacus Acumen for quick and sound learning. In today's session, we are going to talk about the concentrated load concept in Abacus software. So let's get started. So at the end of this video, what you will get to know, you will understand the concept of a concentrated point load. You will also get to know about the Abacus keyword for a concentrated load and then hands on example in Abacus for a concentrated load. In typical real world scenario, there are several places where you have to apply a load as a concentrated force. So I just put some of these few, few real world examples in this slide. The first example you see is a tower crane where the load is carried through a single point or more like a concentrated load. Or most of this mobile phone in today's world has to go to a three point bend test where actually uh, the, the, the load application is a series of point load which is also called as a line load. So this is again a concentrated load in a vertical direction. Or most of these bicycle frames we see where actually load is more like a concentrated four. Or you see uh, the car transportation utility vehicle where their lift gate is uh, used to try to shift the vehicle from ground to inside a vehicle and you see the the load transfer through is a single point uh, contact between a tire and the lift frame. So this particular application is also considered a candidate for a concentrated load example. Now try to understand how you can apply this uh, concentrated load in a Abacus software. So what are the exact syntax for a, a concentrated load in a Abacus format? Abacus understand uh, concentrated load. The keyword we have to use in Abacus is a star C load. So star C load is corresponding to a concentrated load. How you can apply concentrated node load? You can apply using a node number or a set and then you can give a direction whether it is applied in x direction y direction or z direction and then you can give a magnitude so the first line where you see say you can give a node number so i am applying at the 12 number node in three direction means a z direction and then i am applying a negative 10 so the load is getting applied opposite to a z direction or you can create a bunch of node set. So for example, you can create a ABC node set which contains series of uh, nodes and then you give that node set followed by the direction. Now in this particular example, I am using a two which is a Y direction and then I'm, I'm applying a minus 200 Newton load. So it's just so, so simple. You apply a star, you see a, write a star C load then you give a node number or node set, then you give a direction and then you... Now friends, uh, try to understand the follower force concept and uh, where we are to use the follower force. Now let's take a typical example of a cantilever beam. Now this is a cantilever beam which is subjected to a force F and if because of this force, if this cantilever beam go to a large displacement and if you don't have a follower option, then this force will be in one particular direction. For this particular case, it will be in a vertical direction. But in practical sense or real time situation, whenever structured go for a large deformation problem or large displacement, your loading is perpendicular to a deformed shape. So if this is a large deformation problem, your force should be perpendicular to a cantilever beam. And once your loading become perpendicular to a deformed shape, now for a very typical to this example, then for this corresponding to this force, you will get a two component, vertical component and then horizontal component. And because of this horizontal component, the displacement what you get will be higher compared to a non-follower option. And this displacement then really make a sense for actual deformation what you see in a problem. So typical thumb rule to use a follower option are whenever there is a large displacement problem, you have to use a follower force. Now this large displacement problem people also called as a nonlinear geometrical problem where your stiffness matrix is changing with a displacement. So whenever you have to go for a nonlinear geometrical problem, use a follower option in your concentrated load. 
typically for abacus non-linear geometrical problems are invoked with the nl jam on also this force you have to use at a node or at or a element where there is a active rotational degree of freedom so you can use this particular follower option with a beam and shell element you cannot use this this particular follower force option with a solid element because for solid element you don't have a active rotational degree of freedom so if i had to summarize it you have to use a follower force wherever you see a nonlinear geometrical problem you have to use this follower force on a node which having a active rotational degree of freedom that means for a beam and shell you cannot use this problem with a solid element so what is the syntax for the follower force follower force the syntax is same like what you have a star c load and then you just just follow a node number or node set direction magnitude but then you have to invoke one more additional key that is a star c load comma follower so once you do this this the c load will become a follower and it will follow the node rotation so your load is always perpendicular to a deformed shape hands on simulation on the c load so right now on the screen what you are seeing is i just tried to build a cantilever problem so we'll uh, we'll start doing a setup for a cantilever problem and then uh, we'll see what is the difference we get for us with c load and uh, c load followed so this is like a 20 millimeter by 100 millimeter uh, steel plate so more like a common steel rule and then the, it is having a steel material properties and uh, this is a one millimeter thick so i uh, you can just star cell section element set and then metal property steel one millimeter thickness so uh, we'll fix one end and another end will apply a, a c load now to execute this problem we are use a hypermesh 11 version but you can free to use any preprocessor what you want and the solver will be abacus one so I'll just create a node set for this end to get a fixed condition. So in analysis, I'll just go to entity set option and I'll say fixed nodes. And then I'll have this fixed node set created. Then I'll say load nodes. and then load so I'll just say load nodes so this is also created so if I had to review it I can see the load nodes and then I can see a fixed nodes then I'll just create a, a boundary condition first so I'll create fixed condition which is a one end is fixed then card image is a history and then I'll say create and edit and then I'll say boundary condition node set are fixed and then we are going to fix in all six degree of freedom that means we are going to constant all translation and on rotation and then I'll create a load So this load will be uh, on a load set and then, then we'll apply some 50 Newton load on the structure in negative direction. So I'll say create, then I'll say C load and then node set I'll say load node third direction and then minus 10 on each node. So total load we'll get applied is a there are five nodes so minus 50 Newton then I'll just create a load step which is I'll say static and then I'll select a load collector fix and fix condition and loading condition I'll select output blocks and I'll say create and then edit so I have star static then I say it's a static load case I'll also use a NL option so mainly for nonlinear geometrical uh, 
analysis i i just uh, use nl jump is equal to yes option then i'll use data line i'll say initial increment 0.1 final uh, t period is 1 then i'll say 0.1 as a minimum increment and maximum increment as a 1 so that's it so we are now ready to solve this problem so i'll say c load example now we'll also export this INP file export as a C load so I export as a C load dot INP export so now now let's go and check how the input file looks like So we are use a star step nl jump is equal to s static steps we are given a data line about a time increment then we have star c load so it is just load in one particular direction it is not a follower where we have load nodes in three direction minus 10 newton is applied boundary condition fixed node all translation and rotational degree of freedom is fixed so now let's try and try to solve this problem so I'll say abacus j is equal to file name int as an interactive so abacus will now go and first check pre.exe if there is any pre-processor pre related error if there is no preprocessor related, it will go to a solver, which is a standard .exe. So there is no preprocessor related error, so it is gone to a standard uh, .exe. So it will start uh, doing all the calculations. So we are done with analysis. Now let's do one more thing. We'll just add a follower option to the current file and see what is the difference we get. So again, I'll just go to a load, and I'll just say instead of with a C load I'll put a follower option so we have a C load comma follow follower so this become a follower option I'll save it as a C load follower dot HM and I'll just export it as a C load dot follower dot INP so now uh, let's have a look on a C load dot follower how how it the index syntax and how is the input file looks like so now the difference between the earlier file and this file we have c load comma follower so earlier it was only c load now it is having a follower option now let's run this file so i'll say c load follower and So this is done the second is also done now let's uh, let's see how much difference we get so I, I just open a um, hyperworks uh, version 11 hyperview so let's see side by side window what is the difference we get uh, using a C load and then C load followed so the first window I take a C load the second window I am taking a ODB file of a C load follower and then let's see at the end of the load oh, what is the displacement we are getting let me clean up all this text
Now guys, if you can see, you see uh, quite a bit difference in both the displacement wise. So what we are expecting is a C load follower. C load follower will have a higher displacement compared to a C load because your load is always perpendicular to structured so that's what actually it is saying so if you see only with C load the displacement what you get is uh, around 40 millimeter but then if you use a C load follower option what your displacement you get is a uh, 44 and uh, which is uh, more critical uh, for uh, when you go for a large displacement problem where uh, you can use a C load follower option that's all guys uh, from our side mm. uh, what we told you is a C load and C load follower with a real time example so go ahead and start using a C load wherever in your simulation you have to use and uh, try to get a feel with a C load and the C load follower thanks for watching this video if you have any query or if you have to give any valuable feedback please send a feedback at abacusacumen at the gmail.com don't forget to like our YouTube uh, channel and also don't, uh, don't forget to like us uh, Facebook page 